There are 10 characters you can unlock in the No Return mode for The Last of Us 2 Remaster. I've spent countless hours with each one of them and all have unique strengths but also drawbacks. That's why today we're gonna take a look at a quick breakdown as well as the characters I found to be the strongest of them all. So let's get started with Ali. She actually features a semi-auto pistol, already a pretty good starting weapon that you can easily fit with a silencer assuming that you get the recipe or the skill tree for it as you play through the levels. But it's a really good one if you prefer sneaking around with her. She can actually be built both as a more frontline kind of character, but she can also excel at playing stealthy. Molotovs is her second unlock that she starts with, including the recipe to craft them. As I've said in the previous video, Molotovs, like all of the other throwables, are extremely, extremely good in this game mode. And especially so to set enemies on fire once you can extend its range to engulf an entire group before they even get a chance to react. But she also starts with two skill branches right out of the gate instead of the typical one like most of the other characters which gives her a pretty significant advantage. However, the first one, which is always going to be Perseverance, is one of the best branches in the game because of the Endure mechanic. Like I covered previously, this is sort of a cheat death mechanic that turns a lethal blow into a blow that just leaves you off at low HP. And like I said, some bosses can one-shot you, so this can help you a ton in those encounters. But the second skill tree is usually going to be random, yet still as significant, so it could be Covered Ops, Vigilance, or any of the others, plus, of course, the additional skill branches that you can unlock anyway as you progress through the levels. So in total, Ellie can actually end up with the most amount of skill branches of all the characters in the game. And it helps a ton the fact that she also gets 50% extra meds compared to all the other characters, so she can instantly get a lot of extra skill points to become a lot more powerful by the end of the run. Combined with her above average detection skill and pretty nimble movesets, she's pretty much a top tier pick right there, right from the get go. Now at number 2 we have Dina, and I'm not gonna lie, I found her at first to be one of the weakest characters, I still kinda do, however her kit kinda provides a very awesome and fun way of playing via the stun bombs and the trap mines she can craft, better than no others. So once you get to start learning all the levels, all the locations and the enemy pathing, this character is actually going to start to shine a lot more because trap mines provide an amazing advantage. So let's say you're getting overrun by enemies, either zombies or maybe even humans, you can just set a few strategic points in places you know they will actually step in and this is going to give you unparalleled advantage to keep a position, not get overrun and shoot everybody else while others are getting blown to pieces. However, this kind of falls off against the boss fight, which in my opinion is the most important because you don't really have enough time or place to set up a proper trap mine. And even more so, you might get a chance to be caught off in the blast explosion, which can become really large once you get to invest more points in her skill tree. Now also, zombie rushes are notoriously annoying to place anything down because the cramped spaces, plus they don't really give you any room to breathe, that's why she kind of falls off a lot more compared to some of the other characters. Now moving on to number 3, we have Jesse. This is among the best characters in the game. He's all about playing stealthy, so he already starts with a silenced pistol, plus the recipe to craft further silencers. Others will actually have to get this specific skill branch if they are lucky. So in back-to-back -back fights, especially against human enemies, no zombie rushes and whatnot, he can easily excel by sneaking around and just headshotting everybody without ever being detected. He also gets pipe bombs, both as a starting item as well as crafting recipe, so whenever you need to blow entire groups of enemies to pieces, he is the guy for that. Again, against the last final boss encounter, pipe bombs are also some of the best options to have as throwables, assuming that you also don't throw them back at your feet. Meanwhile, his starting skill tree is Guerrilla, so this has everything that you need to improve what already makes him great, so more durable silencers, stronger pipe bombs and so on, literally everything that you need in one single kit. Now he also earns more currency compared to everybody else, which is great because he gets a unique mechanic that lets him refresh the trading post infinitely per one single run, unlike all other characters that can only do it once per turn. So you can literally cycle through all the best weapons, all the upgrades and all the consumables, buy them outright and not really care about anything. 
Now, the last two on this side are Joel and Tommy, and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hate what they did with them, as in this case, they kind of remove their dodge ability. That's why in some of the gameplay scenes, you will see that I don't dodge with Joel or with Tommy, and that's because they don't have the ability to dodge. However, they do kind of compensate with having a bit more HP and being more sturdy against melee attacks. However, I found that that's still not going to be sufficient as one of the most important things in this game mode is the ability to dodge. So the way you compensate this with Joel, for example, is by being a lot more sneaky and planning a lot more deliberately in the way you attack enemies. But he does have other tools that kind of make up for these drawbacks. One of them is the starting custom revolver, a fully upgraded version and a strong one actually that's immediately OP. So you can one or two shot at most, most of the enemies, plus the accuracy on this thing is absolutely insane. Now, he also gets to start with a shiv, shiv recipe and the shiv skill tree, so you can make your stealth takedowns almost instantaneous, craft battle shivs, and this is going to also be very good against clickers. He's one of the few characters that can actually one-shot clickers, assuming you get the upper hand and assuming you have crafted at least a few shivs. Um, his higher HP base also means you can build him a bit towards melee brawler if you're lucky with the skill branches, but most of the time you're going to be playing stealthy with him, you don't really want to be out in the open. And the same goes with Tommy. Tommy gets a custom weapon too. This includes a sniper rifle. He's the only one that gets it, which means with a really good scope attached, he can easily take down enemies from very far away. Now, if you know the levels and assuming that the level is large enough and you spawn far away from the enemies, this can be very good because you can just tap them all before they get a chance to get close. However, in practice, this becomes quite troublesome as most of the maps and the enemy spawns tend to be quite close to you, especially if you get into zombie rush modes when they tend to overwhelm you, run all over the place and you don't really get a chance to use it that much. So good positioning is what's going to enable this character even more, that's why both him and Joel is something that I recommend for higher, more advanced kind of players. But the marksman starting skill tree will help quite a bit with stability and accuracy if you do find that to be a bit troublesome. Now, on the side of the wolves, we have Abby, and she's the starting character as you can immediately play with right here. I will say this outright, she is one of the best characters in the entire game at pure on surviving, and that is because of her unique ability to passively heal on melee kills, which is going to become even stronger when you combine this with her brawler skill line, which has another healing mechanic this time around on melee hits. So by simply clobbering enemies in the face and then just finishing them off with melee attacks, you can regenerate so much HP. You can literally go through an entire group of enemies while being shot at and constantly regenerate, assuming that none of them have any ways to interrupt you, like shotguns or maybe throwables or explosives. But in most other situations, she is by far the best. Now, once you get both of these, as well as a good weapon, which you can, by the way, also repair and upgrade, she becomes ridiculous at destroying everything. It's especially good against the zombie rush modes, but even boss fights, or whenever you tend to have a lot of zombies at one given time attacking at you. You can just take down these encounters, resume fighting the boss, once other adds come in, take them down quickly, and then again shoot at the boss, GG, you're done with it. Another pretty ridiculously good character is Lev, it's just a shame that he's on the team that I don't really like, so he's another stealthy character, even more so than Jesse, as he starts with a slightly upgraded bow, now bows are much better than pistols because they tend to one-shot any target regardless where you hit them, with the exception of maybe wolves or other characters that have armor on them. Plus, pistol for one situation turns bad, they have bow upgrades, an archery upgrade branch, as well as an improved listening mode, among others. So this is one of the best and easiest characters to build fully stealthy if you also get a bit more lucky with um, some of the branches you get from completing levels. His smaller body frame also helps a ton to sneak around without being noticed, so he's extremely nimble and can squeeze through spaces faster than everybody else. But the bow play is of course the highlight here and my favorite, it's one of the best ways to one-shot enemies without ever being detected. The range on it is also very good, especially once you get the range finder, you can easily aim those headshots, which is something that with the pistol you can't really do from too far away, at least not with the one that is silenced. 
and it also helps that you can craft additional arrows including the follow-up explosives from just investing into his skill tree so this means he's even great at fighting against bosses like the bloaters or any of the other zombie boss fights in the end arena so really one top tier character to play with i definitely recommend to play with him as he is very fun now at number eight we have yara and she's kind of like the opposite of lev well depends how you look at it but essentially she starts with the least amount of items least amount of upgrades but she always has Lev as a companion no matter what. So you're never going to be alone in any level. Plus, I think Lev can stack on top of any other companion that you can unlock, which means that Yara is the only one that can go with up to two companions within the same level. But uh, this means that on your own, you're kind of weak. You don't have much to protect yourself with. You only have that pistol and you're kind of dependent on upgrades and being lucky with the items you can get from the drops or from the trading post. Additionally, your skill tree, at least the starting one, is not going to be that helpful, and that's because of the really dumb companion AI compared to the enemy AI, which is much better. So you can turn your companions to be a lot more aggressive and shoot more often in combat. However, what I found is that that actually doesn't really happen, and usually your companion just stands there getting clapped by the enemies. If they can improve the AI on the companion side, sure, she can maybe be a much stronger contender, but for now, she is rather weak. The number 9 is Mel, again, a pretty weak character. She fits a more Magic kind of playstyle, and this is something that usually you don't really want in this game mode. So yes, she has better healing packs, she can heal up faster and get more out of them, but I found that this mechanic is not that useful in practice, so let me explain. First of all, if you have to heal during an actual chase, you already messed something up really gravely, so you shouldn't be in that position anyway. Second of all, if you do plan properly, then you have enough time to lurk around in the shadows and have plenty of time to heal up no matter what, especially if you apply the rules of disengaging ASAP like how I covered in the tips and tricks video. So that's why this is not going to be as helpful, but I guess it could be maybe in the boss fight if you do have a small window of opportunity. She does, however, start with a revolver, so like I said, that's one of the best guns in the game, that's why she might make up for it a little bit. And finally, to number 10, we have Manny. Now, he's definitely not the least because he's actually a super strong character, and his starting weapons are really great too. So one of them is the hunting pistol. Now, this is going to be by far the best one-shot tool in the game, at least in the pistol category. No matter what you aim at, headshots or body, you're usually going to immediately tap them right away. Now, if they do have armor, maybe yes, you need two shots, but even then you can upgrade this and have some extra damage. Plus, the range and accuracy on it is even better than that of the revolver. Additionally, Manny gets a starting assault rifle plus the ability to craft extra bullets for it, which is insane. The munition skill line that he starts with is actually very strong. Eventually, you can even craft additional bullets for hunting rifle that you already have and even incendiary shots for the double barrel shotgun, assuming that you manage to find it. So as you might have noticed, this guy is built like a soldier. He's probably the best at preparing for the final boss encounter. If you have any trouble with that, this might be the best to just get all of the tools in the game and unleash as much damage as possible in the final encounter. Now his only disadvantage is the fact that he cannot get health kit recipes. However, he can still find them by just like going into the outpost and purchasing them or randomly out in levels. You can still utilize them, you just cannot craft them. So again, he compensates for that by just having a lot more initial health, about 150%. Plus, you can, of course, get more spare parts to upgrade those weapons in the first place. So plus 50% compared to all other characters, which means you can go with a full kit of weapons fully upgraded and completely destroy enemies. Yeah, and this is pretty much it with all of them. Let me know which one is your favorite and the one that you use the most. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.